Welcome to SRG Sports Channel. Today we will have an interaction with a personality whose columns you may have read for many years. His style of reporting is like a storyteller and today we plan to share with you the story of his involvement in the other activities which many of you may not be aware of. We will of course have a chat on his day-to-day -day life that is how is the day of a sports journalist. Today we are visiting his house to have an interview of his varied interest. The SRG Sports Channel Director, Madam Arundhati Ghosh, who has represented India in 8 tests and 11 ODIs and who is also a proud recipient of Cash Award for her cricketing achievements from BCCI in 2017, will be having a special session with the sports journalist Mr. Clayton Mozello. We are now near his residence in Amboli, Andheri, where he stays. So let us proceed to meet the famous sports journalist, Mr. Clayton Mazzello. It's a pleasure and an honour to be in a place where I'm sitting with uh, two stalwarts actually. Mr. Clayton, he has a career of 30 years in sports journalism and Arundhati Ghosh who has uh, who had debuted in 1984 and she's played she's represented India in about 19 matches tests and ODIs so I don't know uh, how I deserve to be on this couch uh, with her and in front of him but uh, I feel fortunate so just I am at a loss of words now that's uh, that's the that's the reason I might fumble a lot of times but uh, just to start with a lighter note uh, Mr. Clayton, uh, people aspire to be like journalists in a different uh, in a different arena altogether, and sometimes uh, they want to be if they are into sports, into cricket, they want to be players. So, what what kind of thoughts and what made you come into sports journalism and cover cricket? And you've been doing that for the last thirty years. How did it all start from your childhood? Uh, it started in 1978. Uh, I was not interested in cricket, but uh, my father, who was working then for a publication, an automobile publication, uh, bought home a magazine called Sports Week's World of Cricket. And uh, I don't know, he um, bought, brought it home and then I just went through it and I don't know what uh, bit me, the bug bit me. Uh, how it bit me, I don't know, but I was bitten by this cricket bug. What was your age then? I was just 10. Okay. Yeah. And uh, maybe I was just interested in the pictures which the magazine provided. And then I got into the hardcore things like scorecards and uh, scorecards, basically scorecards. Uh, I could memorize uh, scorecards, but I could not memorize what was taught in school. Okay. So I was a very poor student. Uh, failed my fifth and sixth standard. Uh, but uh, cricket was my passion. From scorecards, I graduated into reading reports. Uh, but at the heart of the interest was pictures. Okay. Yeah, it still is actually. Okay. If you give me a choice of going through 50 pictures and uh, maybe 10 articles, I'll go through uh, pictures, which is quite normal. There's nothing. Uh, it's nothing extraordinary which I did. Mm. Uh, but I got bitten by this cricket bug. And another magazine which my father brought home was uh, the Illustrated Weekly of India the following year, mm. before the 1979 World Cup. Okay. Uh, you know, Illustrated Weekly of India uh, used to bring out cricket specials mm. and they were edited by that great uh, journalist Raju Bharatan, who was an expert also in music. And he edited all those magazines and I have got a book here by Kushwan Singh, his autobiography, mm -hmm. which uh, says that from all the issues they uh, published, the cricket ones were the best sellers okay. and all credit goes to Raju Bharatan. And um, somehow I lost that Illustrated Weekly of India along the way and um, couldn't find it, couldn't find it and I joined uh, Marine Sports, the booksellers in 1985. Mm. Uh, that's where I met Raju Bharatan for the first time. I even had the, you know, the audacity to ask him for a copy the own author for a copy and he said uh, he's got it somewhere at home and I kept pestering him whenever he came but uh, I had no luck with him 
Ultimately, I found this issue in some Radhiwala at uh, Dadar. I don't know what uh, made me feel that he had this issue. There was a shop in Dadar, which an old newspaper shop, which had a pile of illustrated weeklies of, of India. And I and you know this guy, he, uh, he was a deaf and dumb chap, this uh, shop guy. And I couldn't explain to him what I wanted. You know, then I tried to make a sign of a bat, a ball, cricket. Then he relented and then he made me go through all those issues. And I found that issue. Okay. I found that issue and I came home and I bound that issue, which is still with me. I never let it go all later right. on. So, these two magazines kicked off my uh, interest in cricket. But uh, on the school front, on the academics front, a very poor student could just, uh, during recess, I used to have my snack and I used to go to the school library. This is our lady of salvation school in Dadar. Okay. And uh, for some strange reason, they had only four issues of sports magazines. Okay. Maybe two sports stars, uh, one sports week, two sports world, whatever. And every research I used to go through the same magazines. So, that's how the passion for cricket. And it's been 30 years now. I mean, what's your take on how the scenario, how the picture has changed altogether? I mean, on a personal level, what would you say? Are you are talking in terms of journalism? or Journalism, media, uh, sports journalism. Cricket well, media. social media has caused a sea change. Uh, almost made... Uh, some form of journalism redundant because everyone gets uh, their dope from social media. Right. But I don't believe that uh, journalism will not survive. Journalism will survive. I hope it survives. Uh, as I said, social media has brought about a sea change. Uh, but then journalists have to cope. You know, you'll have to cope with something. You'll have to uh, reinvent yourself. Uh, think about how you're going to present news in a different ways and I think uh, editor should encourage that. Right. So it's a fact of life, you have to face it. So, I, would, I would just, this is out of curiosity, in, uh, initially when you had started as a journalist, as a freelancer, I read that. So uh, how was your day then, back then, how was your day, how was the day in the life of Mr. Clayton and how is it today in this ever-changing scenario of media and everything? See, it was uh, different when I started off uh, as a freelancer. That was in 1988. Right. I, uh, the day I uh, finished my uh, SSC exams, the day after, I joined a bookshop called the Marine Sports in Dadar. To work? Yeah. So, effectively, I have been working since the first day of my SSC holidays. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, then I joined that place and... Um, and you were working as a? As a salesman in the shop. All right. Then I got interested in statistics, so this is a long story, but I should yeah, tell yeah, it. Yeah, we have all the time in the world. Uh, the thing was that uh, there was a chance to branch into sports goods. See, marine sports only sold books. Okay. They did not get into sports goods, but there was a chance to do that. So, uh, my boss, Mr. Theo Briganza, uh, he spoke to me about it. And then we went to Pune, uh, to Sunny Sports Boutique. Uh, where Gavaskar was a partner along with Raju Mehta and Shubhangi Kulkarni. So there we discuss how we will do this sports goods business and all. And uh, we had a meeting, spent one full day and a half in uh, Pune and came back. And uh, this did not appeal to Mr. Briganza. You know, he thought it would not work. So we shut down the idea. But there was an opportunity for me to do something. You know, selling small pairs of shorts, socks, sports uh, goods, bats. And uh, he very kindly gave me the permission to pursue that while working at Marine Sports. So, I used to go to Pune on the weekends, get my stuff. And Raju Mehta was very kind. He gave me his cricket coffin, old cricket coffin. Raju Mehta was a former Baroda player. And I used to get stuff in the coffin, try and sell it within my friends, circle of friends and relatives. So one evening, I came uh, back to the shop, Marine Sports, uh, rather late from Pune. And uh, they were packing up and I just wanted to keep something in the shop overnight. And suddenly this gentleman comes by the name of Kiran Asher, the shop. I had seen him only once or twice before. 
and uh, he was a very colorful guy okay a very uh, gregarious if you want to call that and very friendly and he hardly knew me and he said i was unpacking so he said uh, what are you doing what, what what's all this so i said this is the stuff i get for to sell among my friends you know and uh, probably he saw a bat someone had ordered a bat or something he said why don't you come to my school i have started coaching saint mary school so i said uh, come and do what he said uh, show your stuff to my boys they may buy so i said okay so next this week was completely out of the blue out of the blue okay actually i don't think i was having any uh, cricket equipment also it was just shorts uh, maybe one pair of shoes and uh, socks and t-shirts so i went next weekend to next couple of days whenever i got off i went to pune got some cricket stuff i filled the coffin with cricket stuff so i went to pune uh, stuff lot of uh, cricket stuff in the coffin and i came back and now i had to go to saint mary school to you know probably sell this huh. so my late brother christopher had a pujo cycle in those days and he very kindly allowed me to use the cycle so i should tie the coffin uh, to the bike carrier oh. and take it to saint mary's uh, school at masgaon it was quite a climb you, you wouldn't ride your cycle on that hill so you have to get off the cycle and you know cart it around and uh, to my surprise the boys were really very very interested in buying uh, stuff from me i don't know why and i sold everything the first day and i had a couple of kashmir willow bats Okay. so they wanted english willow bats now saint mary's is an affluent school so they said uh, get us uh, english bats to see so in those days sg sunny tani was costing 750 and i sold to sunny tani bats uh, to them and that's how this journey started then i sold books also side by side then i got uh, more friendly with kiran who was coaching this team then i got close to the team also because i used to go for their practice sessions practice matches and they reached the jail shield final and this final is not talked about too much but they beat sharda sham english please which had sachin tendulkar in it and they beat that team huh? completely yeah. spirited young team i mean jail shield was young only okay? spirited outfit and uh, at that time i i did not uh, i did not have any contact with midday you know but kiran asked me that uh, can you uh, use your influence and, and you know get some pub- something published for our school because i don't think the uh, report has come very prominently okay so i said okay so i attempted to write a few words and then uh, ayas memon the famous uh, cricket writer right. and later editor of midday uh, he used to come to the shop often often hmm. so i requested my uh, i don't know whether i typed it out i don't think i typed it out. i wrote it and he said okay let me try and that article published uh, on the 23rd of may 1988 then once that first article got published i thought i should make some entry into journalism hmm. and this was how long since when uh, since when you started uh, what was the gap i started in 88 only that was the first article okay And then I started AP? because uh, see every, each uh, newspaper have their reporters and right. stuff like that, so it becomes difficult. But I thought of uh, some way of getting a entry into journalism by statistics. So I used to compile one uh, stats pack. They used to call it a track record before okay. every test match or before every test series. So those used to get published in midday uh, often. The ones that you made. Yeah. Okay. and then uh, i started covering uh, local cricket also so it's a combination of everything and then by 94 uh, i was a regular contributor to midday as a freelancer okay and in uh, june 1994 uh, i was on their staff so from june 1994 first of june 1994 i have still have the same job how does it feel being associated with an organization wonderful so i mean it's long. only a pleasure three decades yeah so it's so i joke with people they say you are you know you are in midday for too long 
you're still in midday. I said, yeah, because no one else would give me a job. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I would just like to uh, also uh, to interrupt uh, Arundhati Ma'am Sami. एक सवाल मतलब क्योंकि मैंने सर से भी पूछा तो आपकी शुरुआत जब आपने 94 84 में की थी तब माहौल कैसा था तब कैसे शुरुआत हुई मेरे शुरुआत 84 से नहीं 84 आई प्लेड फॉर इंडिया या यू डेब्यूट हां डेब्यू लेकिन आई स्टार्टेड प्लेइंग इन 1976 1976 आशे का सर के टीम में सर ने मुझे खेलने को अलाउ किया नवी क्रीड़ा मंडल से हां और हम लोग तब से जो खेलने लगे पीछे मुड़ के देखे ही नहीं क्योंकि आचे का सर का एक ऐसा मानना था कि जितना खेलोगे उतना टेम्परामेंट डेवलप होगा और उतना हमारे टाइम में वुमेन्स क्रिकेट एज सच कुछ था नहीं तो सर हम लोग को ले जाते थे और लड़कों के साथ खिलवा देते थे मैचेस आजाद मैदान लेके जाए कभी माटुंगा लेके जाए कभी शिवाजी पार्क जुमका ने जहाँ भी शारदा श्रम स्कूल के बच्चे लोग खेल रहे हैं ससानियन के बच्चे खेल रहे या और कई मैचेस हो रहे सर हम लोग को लेके जाके मुझे उनकी बेटी विशा का आचरे कर और एक और हम लोग तीन दिन जाके वो लड़कों के बीच मैच खेल के आ जाते थे प्रैक्टिस से घर आके पहुँचे ही नहीं कि सर बुला दे चलो आज मैच है खेलना है और हम लोग फिर निकल जाते थे फिर मैच के बाद में सुबह प्रैक्टिस करके मैच खेल के वापिस शाम को प्रैक्टिस करके फिर घर आते थे तो दैट वाज फन ऑन द फील्ड टोटली एक्सपीरियंस भी इतना मिलता था लड़कों के बीच खेल के आज भी मैं हमेशा लड़कियों को वही बोलती हूँ कि जितना खेलोगे और वो भी मिट्टी में टफ में नहीं आज के लड़कियाँ दे आर ब्लेस्ड विथ ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ फैसिलिटीज तो उनको पता ही नहीं कि सीमलेस जो बॉल में सीम ही नहीं उससे बॉलिंग करना है तो बॉलिंग आप कैसा करोगे बॉल में सीम नहीं हम लोग को तो सीम वाला बॉल ही नहीं मिलता था कभी फर्स्ट सेमी न्यू बॉल हम लोग को माधव मंत्री सर ने दिलवाया जब वो आके नेट में देखे एक सर कि वी आर प्रैक्टिसिंग जो बॉल में सीम ही नहीं है तो मुझे पूछे अरे अरुण दी इससे तू बॉल कैसा कर दे बोले सर ऑप्शन ही नहीं है ये भी अगर कुछ बोलो तो ये भी नहीं मिलेगा तो हाथ तो घूमता है प्रैक्टिस कुछ ना कुछ होते रहते हैं फिर उन्होंने बोला था कि भाई कल सुबह प्रैक्टिस के बाद में मेरे ऑफिस में ए में आने का आगे मैं बोलूँगा फिर मैं प्रैक्टिस के बाद उनके पास गई तो वहाँ उन्होंने मुझे सेमी न्यू बॉल्स टाइम शील्ड का उन्होंने मुझे दिया दो बॉल्स दिए बोले ये जब खेल के हो जाएगा वो बॉल आप डिब्बे में डाल के मुझे ला के रिटर्न करने का दूसरा दो बॉल्स ले जाने का तब से हम लोग सेमी न्यू बॉल में खेलने लगे नया बॉल तो मैच टू मैच ही खेलते हैं बैठने का भी मिला नहीं नया बॉल कैसा रहे? जुड़ी रहूंगी बोल के ही ये चैनल का सोची की जब तक रहूंगी खेल के साथ ही रहूंगी इससे अच्छा कुछ हो नहीं सकता मोशन से के बारे में हम लोग ने बहुत कुछ सुना है और आपने उनको जिस तरह से सपोर्ट तभी से जिस दिन से हुआ है ये एक्सीडेंट और इंसिडेंट आज तक आपने जो किया है दैट इज रियली एडमायरेबल सर आप उसके बारे में जरा सब लोगों को ब्रीफ करेंगे तो अच्छा लगेगा इट है I heard about this uh, case where a boy Mohsin uh, fell off the train mm. while returning from uh, a junior camp, mm. a teenager, and uh, he was semi-paralyzed. He was taken to Hinduja Hospital, and uh, uh, Sachin Tendulkar came and uh, met him one night. And Sachin was playing there. Na, no? it's not mm. that you know he was retired, and so he made mm. time for him. and uh, it was lovely to read that and uh, i remember uh, our photographer i think it was santosh harare who went to hinduja hospital and shot the picture and uh, santosh heard what sachin had to say to him i think sachin told him that one day i'll play with you mm. something like that you know so very inspiring 
and a uh, lot of people came forward to help uh, mohsin uh, he comes from a very poor family uh, but one day as uh, things normally happen uh, you know uh, the funding was not coming through uh, a lot of people had promised something they delivered to an extent but uh, see helping someone you have got to go all the way okay. you cannot stop mm. right you know that is helping Correct. non stop mm. uh, but people uh, promised something they delivered something but did not go through with it mm. and uh, that is when his father came to me and uh, i don't know how he got my contact he came to me and said you know something is we should do something about this then i did not know what to do i said see we have got an inkalab paper in our group we can put out an appeal for people to send in funds that worked to an extent not very much because this treatment is very very extensive mm-hmm. it's not just one time charity you see right then they wanted more money then his father told me that uh, i have taken my son to kerala for these extensive uh, intensive massage treatment right. and they had only one session there in kerala the full family went with him i mean fa- full family in the sense mother father and the kid and they stayed there for a while and his father said only that is working now i can see only improvement there but we have to send him for 28 days how do we manage now 28 days i was thinking thinking what to do then uh, there is a, a person a cricket lover thara cricket lover called sham bhatia in dubai okay uh, i had just started knowing sham bhatia well and sham bhatia has a museum i went to see sham bhatia at cci for something and then i asked him uh, that would you be able to help this boy and he to my surprise he readily agreed heart of gold readily agreed whatever clayton whatever you say so i got the necessary papers because if i am taking money from some someone i have to show no that this is so the first year sham bhatia sponsored his trip to kerala he showed lot of improvement then the second year also came sham bhatia was helping this boy and so were my other friends people who i never knew and i only knew through facebook started helping and uh, my policy to, uh, for this case is very clear that if you want to donate you please donate to his father mm. i don't come into it at all mm. some people say no no but uh, our contact you have to do. so mostly everything is done through his father uh, means even if 1 rupee someone has to donate it is done through his father's bank account so anyway uh, i was happy then the next year came and he had to be sent again so again we organized i say we because it is not only me or it is not me it is there are the other people who have helped me they may trust me that's fine but i have not done it my friends have done it and friends who did not want to be you know uh, mentioned, mentioned at all mm. said just sent money to him and each and every person who has donated i have got a record mm. but some people do not want to be mentioned So I said that's fine. I'll do. Uh, now Mohsin is in a state that um, because of COVID he couldn't go back to Kerala. Okay. Of course that would have meant another maybe about another one lakh for that this thing. Uh, how we would get it, God knows. And he's tried out different things. His father has tried out different things. Uh, at the moment, uh, he's undergoing uh, some uh, rehab where the person comes at home and does it. See with Mohsin, there is not only uh, there is not only expense for his rehab, for his exercises, but also for his medicines. Mm. Okay. He is a grown-up boy now. He is thirty plus. Oh. He is becoming heavy. Okay. His father cannot lift him for the treatment. So all these so problems we face. Mm-hmm. So it's a continuing process. If you ask me, has Mohsin got better? Yeah, Mohsin has got better, but not to normal lengths. On his own. So. So it's not it's continuous it's not it's not that you uh, give money towards mohsin and it's finished hmm. no so do you think can i make an appeal to my viewers to this channel that yes, whoever please. is watching this channel and is interested in helping 
Mosin. Yes. Can please. Yeah, the boy's father uh, handles everything, mm. and they stay in Ulas Nagar. Okay, so you can provide the details to sure. whoever comes forward, when whoever is interested in supporting Mosin's case. Sure. We we can please do, do that. Please do. Now, all the details to provide support will be uh, given in the description box or uh, on the video itself. So yeah, that's uh, a bit. Uh, sad to hear and it's unfortunate for a young it's player. It's something to nice to hear in fact that yeah. sir is being in that case for last 20, 20 years. Two decades you've two been decades. supporting uh, One time like donation, one time charity is a different story sir. And being with a person continuously daily makes her things. That counts for a lot, a large portion of his life. So about uh, young players like this, uh, I've I've been read. I had read in one of your interviews that you mentioned that a lot of people, a lot of young players, a lot of young talents, they come, and uh, only a handful of them can make it to the Indian team or you know the big matches. Uh, and you had mentioned that there's a lack of mentorship that is. Uh, that has been taking place for a long time now. So, but uh, again, if uh, this is something relevant, I find it to be pertinent like this, that you've been supporting a boy who had come to be a sportsman, but uh, he has been uh, unfortunate for the last 20 years, but you've been beside him no matter what, and you and people like you. So that brings me to the, uh, the, the same question that how do you think the problem of this lack of mentorship, how can this be fixed in today's age? Is there a solution at all or is there, this is just a question that will be thrown and there's no answer. Well, there's a question whether you either have mentors or you don't have mentors. Uh, but I believe that you should also look out for mentors if you want to be mentored. Or you should be so strong that you know you're self-taught and you can manage your career. Uh, yeah, there is a problem. A lot of uh, players go astray. We have seen a lot of players going astray. Uh, the IPL has been very beneficial to Indian cricket, but it's also got its downside. Because every cricketer wants to be an IPL player now. Right. Uh, forget the uh, part about you know playing the long form game, or but uh, those ambitions, while on one hand are good, they also can lead you to a path of evil. Mm -hmm. So, we have to be very wary of that. You know what has happened in T20 cricket and in IPL cricket, mm -hmm. uh, the corruption and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I am not saying uh, for a moment that the league is corrupt, uh, but youngsters have to watch out, you know, because right. once the undesired elements come to you, they can just grip you mm -hmm. and then there is no way out of it. So, you have to be very, very careful. Young players have to be very, very careful about this. That greed for, you know, IPL money, mm -hmm. things like that. You have to the be... focus aware. is disturbing. Yeah. On one hand, it is good. It's mm -hmm. a good temptation, yeah. uh, cricketing-wise, but mm -hmm. don't forget the other temptations. I mean, it's, uh, a youngster feels that he should play a good class of cricket. IPL lends itself to... A lot of international exposure, yes. although it is a domestic tournament. We should not forget that IPL is a domestic tournament. It is the subcommittee of the BCCI. Right. It has got international flavor and players okay. are tempted to be part of that flavor, which is fine. You want to play in the best competitive surrounding, mm. but don't forget the other things. Sir, I called एक रेनिकल्स बैट आपके यहाँ देखी तब से सवाल घूम रहा है कि ये आपके खेलते वक्त का पार्ट है या ये आपके कलेक्शन का कार्ड है क्योंकि रेनिकल्स बैट जो है मेरा भी पॉइंट है खुद का खेलते वक्त मैं भी बहुत फैसिनेटेड थी रेनिकल्स बैट से खेलने के लिए उस वक्त हमारे लिए ये पॉसिबल नहीं था कि हम रेनिकल्स से खेलें तो आपके पास ये कैसे पहुंचा वेल दिस इज अ बैट व्हिच आई बॉट फ्रॉम an elderly man uh, who lives in Khar. Uh, glad to say that he is one of my dearest friends now. 
yeah so it was his uh, i think it belonged to uh, mansur ali khan patodi first mm. and uh, he was uh, he liked uh, this man a lot mm. mr ramani mm. and he presented this back to him and that's how i got it